through our social media network. We want to say it is indeed a pleasure to be in the house of the Lord one more time. And it's also a pleasure to be here to help celebrate the 28th anniversary of our senior ministry. Read this scripture that I've chosen for today. I just want to share this testimony with you guys. Back on March, the first week of March, March the 4th, to be exact, I was injured on my job. And from that point on, life has been real rough up until this day. I was out of work on workers' compensation which was him, to put it to be I had the caseworker from him that was working on my case to put my papers together. And it got to the point where I had enough. And I was about to let this lady have it. When I said I was going to let her have it, I was going to let her have it. But, I had a calming voice in the person of my wife, Darling and Lee. She told me, she said, babe, don't do it. We need her to help. And she's going to help us. I said, if she's going to help us, she's going to have to talk to you because I can't talk to her any longer. This lady had me running back and forth, and I was up and down. Watch the hospital center from one end to the other. It was a bad day and I could hardly walk. Get this big break in this big break. And I said, I can't do it. And she said, I got you. She took over from there. And he just said, she caught the same thing on my door. It was traumatic, really. It really was. But I listened to her. God to continue. I'm part of the storm right now, but I know that you will see me through. So I continue to pray for her, my wife, and the lady. And eventually, God worked it out. God worked it out. there earlier to go back to work, but then another circumstance occurred where I had to come back off the contract and not work again. So we're talking about a little over four months with no income coming in. And as a man who's trying to provide for his family and take care of his family, I have all that I need for once in my life because God has blessed me tremendously. But I need to be there for my family and do the things that God has designed me to do. It was the lowest point of my life. And I was like, oh my God. But I read God's word. I know and I know every promise in the Bible is mine. And he said that he would never leave me no more sin. So glory be to God, I was finally fully cleared to return to work. Romans chapter 8, verse 18. 
Well, this only one passage of scripture that I think is very powerful. And it reads just so. Uh, For I reckon that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. This is God's word. This is his promise to us. That there are better days coming. And when we all, when all of God's children are gathered in home, when we all get to heaven, what a time it's going to be. We will now have prayer by the evening church. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. Let us go to the throne of grace and pray. What a friend we have in Jesus. All our sin and grief to bear. What a privilege it is to carry everything to the higher ground. Our Father, good are in heaven. This once again I come before thee to call upon your holy and righteous name. Father, this is a for me, man. I just want to thank you for all of that. Thank you, Father God, for what you've done for us down through the years. Better to us than we've been to ourselves. Father, you've been blessing us each and every day. Heavenly Father, I ask you to stop by the hour for Pampas, only for a little while and have that way. Yeah, yeah. Have it that way, Heavenly Father, I knew everything would be in order. First, I'd like to have the blessing on the Bishop of the Church. Bitch, you have to let the Father and all the big enough wherever he may be pleased. Strengthen him, Lord, wherever he needs his strength. Yes, Lord. Lead and guide us, Lord, and help us be followed in the truth. Yeah, 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 yeah. And the special blessing on the person of the day who was going to bring the message from above. Ask the Lord to anoint him that he will give us a message that we need because Lord so much help. Father God, we ask these things in the name of Jesus. And no, Lord, there's so many sacred writers nowadays, Lord, but nothing is too hard to do. That's your stuff, past hospital from home to nursing home. Someone home is laying in a bed, sir, and not in the So, Father, touch and deliver. Give them some good time to run the grave and look for the Lord. Let's have a special blessing on the children of the day. School is out. Father God, give them protection each and every day. Lead and guide them one day that they will be free to follow so long. Some of them are going on to be with you, Lord. Those families, we ask you to put your love and all around, Lord. Come from the way only you can. Give us something worthy of you to come to us. Lead and guide them to do things that are pleasing in your sight. And when we have done all that you have assigned for us to do on this side of it, Lord. But we like to be open wide in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. But that's what I'm going to do. Don't call the road until I get there. Because I'm coming, Lord, and I'm coming all by myself. Father God, these things we ask in the name of Jesus Christ. Let that will be done. Amen. Amen. Whatever the suffering we go through now, it cannot be compared to the 
joy that we can expect. So,
I do respect my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and our Bishop Matthews. Praise the God that we serve and also Pastor Jones. Lord and Savior. Amen. Amen. I'm not up to part this morning, but the Lord allowed me to be here for this day. I have been going through some things myself. I just came back from South Carolina, bearing my nephew, and it was heavy. And when I came back, I received a call that both of my sisters was trying to make a transition to go to glory. So I've really been going through, but God is sovereign, and He is wonderful to me. And I thank God for being here this morning. And <clears throat> Sister Bird, I thank you for standing in for me this morning. Thank you so much. Amen. Before I go any further. <laughs> Um, I'm just so touched by who is here today. Yes. Mother Buzzy family is here. Faithful with fear, 
every Sunday doing the service of the Lord. Very nice person, beautiful wife, walks beside him. She is his queen. Amen. Amen. And I was the queen, the greatest queen. And so and if it's such thing as the dead can hear what the living ones say, we can praise here and love the same way. Amen. So at this time, I would like to have Deacon Terrell please come.
conversations with him on behalf of the senior ministry. Something for him. Make certain that he gets there's something inside of him.
That's what makes people work even harder. Yeah. When we take a moment to say, Amen. <laughs> We're going to take a moment. There are some members uh, that we want to reflect upon who are, you know, if you notice your program in memory of, so I'm going to ask uh, the musician to play a song. We want to do a moment of silence. I'll call out these names as you play softly in memory of those who have transitioned from being your faithful and are grateful for their service. Here. My name is Brenda Bree. I'm a member of Kevin Rex. 
Fairfax Catholic Church. And um, I've been here before, but I came for to uh, visit a friend of mine, Miss Terrell and her husband. Amen. Oh, bless you. Linda Wayne from Pilgrim Rest Baptist Church. I'm also here to support the Terrell family. Uh, good morning. First I want to give you guys God's praise and uh, to the pastor here. My name is John Allen. I'm a member of the Douglas family. I had an opportunity a few weeks ago to see the comments to uh, on Margaret's home from so on behalf of my family. I'm sure they already expressed the gratitude and uh, just uh, the joy that it, that it was. You made it a beautiful Homegoing transition for my clients. Just a beautiful lady. Yeah. Marcy, we just thank you for all the love that I felt uh, the first time I came here. So I'm glad that, that our family had an opportunity uh, to come back here and, and work with God with you. Uh, we're from North and South Carolina, Virginia, and of course, we're here uh, because I'm from Colorado. I was committed to do this job and we love to get out there and do this uh, praising God and celebrating. So thank you for your love and your warm welcome. Amen. Amen.
get exactly the same vacation home. Yeah. So we have a modified worship service. Yeah. We'll be worshiping live here on the first and second Sunday, and we'll be worshiping virtually on the third and fourth. And can we say amen? Amen.
good to be home. Amen. 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 We give honor and respect to the angel of this house, the person of my bishop, my pastor, Reverend Dr. Bishop Calvin L. Matthews. To the senior minister, who is, I believe this is my third time in a row being here in life. I want to thank Reverend Virginia McCray for the invitation to come and to be a part of the ministry. I praise God for all of you and the continuous work you all do to survive and all who are gathered here today. Uh, I do like I do at home. I want to thank Lottie Dottie and everybody. <laughs> we bring the greetings from the First Baptist Church in Guilford in Columbia, Maryland, where in October, the Lord will bless me to be there for 13 years. <laughs> back and forward, but I, I didn't come alone, amen. My mom is here with me. <laughs> Carol and Joan serves with me at First Baptist. Um, there is a word from the Lord. Pastor told me, gave me instructions. He said, stand up, speak up. I got to sing up. <laughs> and then it's cut up, baby. And then shut up, baby. That's what I plan to do. I just want to give a word that I believe will help encourage all of you on your journey and on your way. I, I saw, and this was confirmation for me, the theme, Fuel for Life, uh, out of Matthew. And so today we are hoping and praying to give something that will encourage you. If you have any Bibles, we'd like you to turn to me. Book of Second Samuel, Second Samuel, Chapter Five. And I want to read verses one through five. No personal private time with God. Read First and Second Samuel in its entirety. It will give you background. I'm not going to do that, but just to give background. Uh, if you have the same man, it begins to read in God's word. All the tribes of Israel came to David at Hebron and said, We are your own flesh and blood. In the past, while Saul was king over us, you were the one who led Israel on their military campaigns. And the Lord said to you, You will shepherd my people Israel, and you will become their ruler. When all the elders of Israel had come to King David at Hebron, the king made a covenant with them at Hebron before the Lord. And they anointed David king over Israel. David was 30 years old when he became king, and he reigned 40 years. In Hebron, he reigned over Judah seven years and six months. And in Jerusalem, he reigned over all Israel and Judah 33 years. Right. The word of God, the people of God, thanks be to God. You may be seated. Amen. You do like that home, if y'all don't mind. Just go on and turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor. Oh, neighbor. The pastor's going to preach. It's time for an oil change.
let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight. O Lord, our strength and our redeemer. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. It's time for an oil check. America is fastly approaching. America is fastly approaching a time in which we are all going to be riding around in electric vehicles. <laughs> California has said by 2035 that most, if not all, of the cars that people will be driving will be EVs, electric vehicles. However, until that time, we will be going in standard vehicles that have an engine. In fact, I would dare say that the majority of us that are gathered here today drive standard vehicles. Vehicles that require gas. Vehicles that require uh, some kind of fluid in order to make the engine run. So until such time as there is a total transfer to electric vehicles, uh, we want to focus in on the fact that all vehicles that we have now require maintenance and care. Maintenance and care is essential because if you have a standing vehicle, you realize that you can't just put gas in the car and keep going and not recognize that there are other fluids that are needed in order for the vehicle to operate at, at optimum level. Yeah. And so it is important to know that you need also an oil change. You need an oil change. You need to make sure that the oil that is keeping your engine running is not corroded, Amen. but it is sufficient to cause lubrication enough for the pistons to fire in your motor. I don't know about you, but we're living in a time in which things are going topsy-turvy, upside down. Ever since 2020, everybody has been just trying to manage on how they're going to live. Everybody's just trying to manage how they're going to survive and let alone thrive. Be it the trauma of these years, it may have caused us to put our spiritual systems out of whack. Some of us have waited too long for maintenance. But now we need to understand that it is necessary for us to get the proper alignment that is needed in order for our operating systems on a spiritual level to be optimal in its operation. Instead of acting, some of us like the little engine that could, we are now, beloved, acting like the engine that can. Instead of us trudging and moving up the mountain with great force, we're now trying our best just to make it to the little hill where we can settle. Yeah. So this message for the senior ministry and for all who are gathered here today is a reminder that we need to know that no matter what comes next, that we're built for the road ahead. In fact, tell the name, I'm built for the road ahead. Just like every vehicle needs a mechanic, every Christian needs some spiritual maintenance. Just like every vehicle needs somebody to look at it and make sure that everything is operating all right. Every now and again, it's good for us to take a pause take an internal inspection of all that is going on with us that we might operate at optimum level. So, beloved, there's times where we need to make sure that we have an oil change. The fuel alone will not help us function at optimal level. So, on our way to promise, it may be time for an oil change. So, let's pull over to the filling station. And then let's let King David help us handle how we can navigate the road ahead. I believe that David wants to help us and tell us how he made it, ergo how you and I can make it as well. 
Well, it gets started initially with David's first oil change. Yeah. You, you remember his oil change. It was in 1 Samuel chapter 16, verse 13, where the Bible says, Then Samuel took the horn of oil and anointed David in the midst of his brothers. Yeah. And the Spirit of the Lord uh, began to rule upon David from that day forth. David wasn't even looking for an oil change, but the eighth son of Jesse was anointed with what God had deemed was rightfully his by anointing his head with oil and calling him into place for such a time as this. Right. See, despite what Samuel did, Saul still remained king for quite some time. Yeah. So let me show you something. Samuel represents the father above. Yeah. David represents the vessel that is willing to receive what God has for him. The oil represents the anointing that God has over his life. Yeah. And Saul represents the challenge to what God wants to bring to bear. And here's the shout in this. When the Father has chosen the vessel yes. and has placed the anointing on the vessel, yeah. no matter the challenge that you may face in front of you, how many know that I'm anointed enough, chosen enough, filled enough, that whatever challenge I face ahead, that God has already deemed that whatever obstacle is in front of me, it's nothing more than a God-given opportunity to overcome and do what God has called me to do. I want somebody to know that God has put another word in you in order that you might overcome any obstacles that you might face. God has put another word in you that you might be an overcomer of whatever you face in this life. God has another word in you and you're an anointed by God that whatever challenge you face, you'll be able to see your way through. But watch it, David was not anointed yet to take the throne. He was just anointed enough just to handle the giant that was in front of him. And sometimes, brother, we're looking at the long game at this thing. We're, we're looking at the promise and purpose that God has given over our lives. But every now and again, you need to take a step back and just use the oil that is enough to handle the giants that are in front of you. So, dear beloved, God gave him enough oil in order for him to cut the head of the giant off. And can I have somebody, the way to promise is one victory at a time. I'm saying the good for people, right? The way to promise is one victory at a time. Whenever you're on the wake up list and you put your feet on terra firma and you open your eyes to a brand new day, that's a victory. Whenever you get up out of your bed and you get dressed in the morning and make your way to work, and Samuel, 
but this time he was anointed by the men of Judah. It's in 2 Samuel chapter 2, verse 4, that it says the following. And the men of Judah came, and there they anointed David over the house of Judah. Right. And the first time he was anointed with purpose, but now he needed another oil change because he was anointed not just for purpose, but he was anointed for a position and to be in a particular place. Mm -hmm. This anointing does not, however, take away from the anointing of purpose that he was initially given, but it is to set him up in place and to set him up in the right position so that the oil that got him to where he is would be enough that God would give him another oil change to remind him that I'm positioning you and putting you in place so that you can get ready to overcome whatever predicament you find in your life. Watch it. The reason why you're in the position that you're in and the reason why you're in the place that you're in right now is because you're being prepared to face another predicament on purpose. Okay, let me back up, put this in the neutral uh, just a bit. See, because you're being prepared to face whatever predicament is on the line, because God has already given you purpose. Watch this. See, as long as as you remain God's chosen, and as long as you remain God's anointed, and as long as you remain God's vessel, beloved, no matter how old you get, no matter how long in the tooth you get, as long as you got breath in your body, and God has put you on the way of this, don't you let nobody tell you what God has got purpose for you to do. As long as God's given you strength, as long as you've got a mind, as long as you focus on Christ, as long as you stand for righteousness, as long as you stand up for justice, and as long as you stand up for power, for God's power, God will give you what you need in order to make it to another day. Don't you let nobody tell you what you can do. Don't you let nobody stop you from doing what God has called. Jesus. 
I pray that God will bless you with every spiritual blessing you need. Listen, listen, if you're Christian and kind enough, keep that hand on that neighbor and say, neighbor, not only do I want God to bless you, but I want God to bless everybody around you. Not only do I want God to bless everybody around you, but I want him to bless everything you lay your hand to do. In the name of Jesus, now let them go and give God praise.
graduating from college, uh, the mother began shouting all over the place. The mother was shouting so uncontrollably that her family could not calm her down. They said, Nana, you need to be quiet because the other graduates are trying to get their name called across the stage. And she said, baby, y'all have to excuse me, but I know what my grandson went through. I know the hardships that he's been through. I know the turmoil that he's been through. I know the challenges that he's faced. I know that his mother and him had to come live with me because they couldn't afford to pay rent. I sit in the store. I know the challenges they face, and I know the difficulties they've been through. So I'm shouting on the fact that God was the wonderful all things together. I'm shouting over the fact that it was God that gave him the money for the tuition. I'm shouting over the fact that it was God that allowed him to get the diploma. Amen. It was God that allowed. Him
work that he has called for you to do. extend to you. Oh, God bless you. If there's anyone in need of prayer, we would invite you to the altar this morning to come for prayer. that you hear. 
fear out of pride. Our faith is gone. Glory to God. We thank you for answering our prayer, God. Thank you, God, for hearing us as we cry out to you, God. Father, touch in the name of Jesus, God. Somebody might be on this altar this morning, God, because of sickness, God, in the body, God. You sit Oh. 